Welcome to the Raise Up Podcast. Hello. I'm Athena. I'm Charlie. And we're here to just help you broaden your horizons on having a growth mindset and learning about entrepreneurship and um, coming along on this journey with us through our our own entrepreneurship. Yeah, it's uh, been a hell of a week. <laughs> yes, I feel like we we went on that. that we went on a trip to Palm Springs. Went to on like, a journey yeah, on Palm yeah, Springs. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's, 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 <clears throat> we're, we're part of a mastermind group, and so we meet with them uh, several times a year, and that was like a long week of learning. Yeah, so there's two parts of that. There was the Awaken, and then there's an inner circle group that we're involved too. So <clears throat> usually we don't do back-to-back -back ones, so it was a long seven, eight days, and beautiful weather. It was yeah. uh, all the way from in the high 90s all the way up to 115 degrees. It was crazy. Yes. Thought it was going to melt away. 115, it wasn't my idea of a great place, but actually it was really, it was nice. I mean, it was like, it was hot. We we're glad to get an AC car. I don't know if I'd ever run a black Escalade again because that was uh, that was pretty hot, but um, yeah. it, the temperature was comfortable. And when it got down to like 107, 108, it was actually really nice. We were pretty glad to be outside in the pool. And You know, I <clears throat> envisioned 112 to be like on the sun hot and it really wasn't i was really comfortable yeah when we were out on the concrete pad you know i remember you walking in uh, your sandals you go oh this is nice and then you got about 20 feet you're like oh my feet are hot they're yeah, hot yeah, and so you had to put yeah. your sandals back on but yeah. you know it's comfortable and actually it was funny is because as a larger guy i've always been hot all the time so i'm always needing to cool and it was like almost reverse temperatures this time because i was trying to get it warmer in the car and you were like putting the ac up and you're yeah, shutting the window I and i think and I was like, man, what is going on here? Like, we're, we're not syncing this. Usually it's the opposite. So anyways, it was beautiful. Palm Springs Street as well. The JW Meyer was a great resort. Um, and uh, we had a good time. It was our really first time uh, checking out Palm Springs. And yeah. so, yeah, it was nice. And uh, uh, great little restaurants there. We found a cute little Mexican restaurant there. We went to twice. Yes. Yeah. So and we found a great little Asian restaurant that had amazing soups. So we had some great soups. And... You know, um, Whole Foods, as to part of our journey, as I want to call it, is to eat healthier. So uh, in the last nine months, I've lost 78 pounds and trying to keep my weight down and doing this stuff. So my wife is getting me to eat. I think we are trying to eat more healthy now. And uh, so we, whenever we go out of town on these things, there always seems to be a Whole Foods somewhere. And my wife is attracted to it like, like Velcro to Velcro. It's easy because a large portion of it is organic and... You know that is another piece is i think earlier in our our like in our hustle we just really abused our bodies where we didn't get enough sleep we didn't get enough water we weren't eating the right food and when i say right food right food is right food for different bodies what's right for my body is not necessarily right for your body and and all of these things but for me like just eating stuff that wasn't right for my body and the ups and downs and the stress and it makes a difference. Well, Whole Foods gave a very <clears throat> good platform of different food there. I mean, you can have some pizza if you wanted to. You could have some sushi if you wanted to. They had huge salad bars. They had nice yeah. warm food. So it was a go-to, especially between our breaks. We only, only had an hour and 20 minutes, and we were 10 minutes away. So it yeah. definitely let us go there and run there. And then we figured out we didn't have enough clothes because we stayed an extra day. So we went to Nordstrom's Rack three times and picked out different things. So, and it was right next door. So it was so convenient. Yes. So like, like the little community that they had of only 40,000 people, it really had a great variety of different places for us to go. So yeah, it was true. Yeah. And you know, in the, in the education that we had, there was pretty incredible. I mean, I thought we really had some breakthroughs and a lot of different things for ourselves, for our mm -hmm. personal gain, for our health, for uh, our knowledge of business and things like that. It was a it was a good trip. I think our kids missed us a little bit because they talked to us quite a bit on the phone. But, no, I didn't I um, think so. But it was a good trip. It was a good trip. You know, when I'm looking back on, I know for myself, I, 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 I feel like I have this insatiable desire to learn. So I'm never satisfied or it's like, I, oh, I already know enough about that. Like I have this just unsatisfied curiosity about, especially around leaderships uh leadership learning leadership styles leadership hacks like you name it and so i've pretty much spent my my walk as as a business owner learning as much as i can about leadership and there's 
at least for both of us too, there's been all of these different modalities that we've tapped into. And this current one, I feel like has been the most holistic, uh, I would say, approach than I've ever taken. And what I mean by that is, it'll be a leadership book on communication or it'll be a leadership book on, on uh, styles or numbers. It, it never really focused in on what we're looking at now, which is finance, health, spirituality. <clears throat> and, and what was the last one? You're catching my brain off par here. Um, I can't remember what the last one was. Finan finances, health, spirituality, and relationships. Relationship, that's it, 100%. Relationships. And so it's like really, if you're walking in through a place where you want to be successful in life, you have to have a pull funnel, four of those. And it was never really explained to me, or it never occurred to me in that as like a whole walk around life. Like I, I read relationship books, like we've had relationship coaching or counseling, but we never really looked at it like there's this peak, this whole picture. Well, I don't think we thought one was related to the other in sequence like it is. Like if you're not healthy, it's hard for you to be healthy to your partner. If you don't have a good relationship, it's hard. If you, any of those struggle, it struggles in your business too because when you're eating, uh, for me, when I'm eating like cheeseburgers and I'm eating fast food, I'm doing this stuff, my energy's low, everything else is low, my body's not feeling as well. So my energy to my employees, to our partners, to our businesses are low too. So when you have a higher frequency, I think is what you're looking yeah. at is when you're healthy and you're doing better, when your relationship is doing well, all that stuff comes out in a whole. I mean, um, you'll see some of our previous podcasts like, where some of the things were a little bit lower, like we had our relationship one that was in there and that was a little bit low because being in business with your partner can be the best thing in the world and then it can be really hard on some things too. So I think being in this partnership with Danny Morell is uh, with his inner, inner circle group and his awaken group uh, has really taught us things that on a fast pace, on a fast pace, more so than we did with other counselors and other coaches and other, other things that we groups, had yeah. and other groups we had. Um, we belonged to another 2020 group that was really a great group, but it was more focused in just our- Running our, the numbers and in the Running the numbers and, and then running our industry. But it's much deeper than that. When you really look at it, it's, it's everything in the whole. It's how to run your company. It's how to run your employees. It's how to be healthier, better relationship towards, um, us as partners and then we it's kind of like the pyramid effect it goes down this way so if we're good this way everything mm -hmm. flows down this way but yeah. if we're stuck here we just can't get past that other one so i think it really uh it helped a lot for us to be part of this so they meet around every five to six weeks sometimes they take two months but it's it's a big commitment but uh i think that is the secret sauce to this particular mastermind group is that you stay engaged like I've read several books that say there's like this 90 day window and after 90 days, if you're not really like revisiting your goals or going back to your intentions, then you start to fall off. Well, you don't get a chance to in this group because it's like you're in front of everybody about every six weeks and it's like getting reinfused and reminded and it's on to the next pillar. So if you were meeting, if you were meeting with um, well, our other group, we met every four months. Yeah, that was so it's three times a year. Yeah, and, and we got to see them at other events in different settings, and we would hang out there too. But it was kind of like you said, like it was we industry intent yes. intended. But this way, as we start to, I wouldn't say fall off, but as we start to maybe get in some of our other habits we got into before, when we are to uh, get with this group, we, we're automatically back in tune. It's like. Yep. It's like working out as you're going to the gym, you go to the gym a lot, you feel good, you do it, then you take two or three months off and then you go back to the gym. You're like, oh, oh man, I'm hurting, you know? Yeah. So this is like, a, say a muscle memory. This is what for our muscles, our brain. It's our stuff that we're, we're re-memorizing this stuff. And listen, we don't have all the answers by any means, but these are things that we noticed that in our town that we don't get. We don't get to be able to do... Um, uh, big events like this where we get mastermind groups together like we get like-minded people together we have a lot of great business leaders in alaska but we don't have a core function here that we all kind of get together and say hey let's how can we help each other do things like that i think there's a lot of intertwining that we do with our other business partners that we do and we talk about things like but this is intentional people that are coming there to to get that next level of education yeah 
And the thing about that's so nice is there's there's nothing comparing anybody to it. Nobody's got a yardstick out. Nobody's saying that, you know, I'm better than you are or anything like that. Everybody's intentionally there to get healthy and better and offering advice and helping each other. Yeah, and you know, one thing that I notice in the industry specific groups is that uh, it takes you time to it takes time to get to know each other and then you become good friends, but there's also this kind of there's a measuring stick there. Um, whereas when we're participating in a group that's not an industry specific group where it's it's an it's an entrepreneurial group there's less of that and it, there's more like openness and curiosity around well explain to me that process you know um, and so that's been also an experience that I've seen well I think we go back to that saying we don't know until we don't know you know yeah no, knowing that what you don't know really limits where you're at. I always say it's blinders. Like we have a blinder in our business and we know this area really well. But as we start to expand our blinders a little bit, you start to say, wow, look at this. And what look, opportunities can come in this way. As your blinders get further and further, all of a sudden you're at a 180 degree and you're seeing everything from right to left. And so many more opportunities come involved. And if you're not part of a mastermind group, or if you're not part of a group that is in your industry or it's giving you this stuff, it's it's a huge, huge part of your growth. Yeah, it's excel it'll accelerate you and your business exponentially. Seeing some of these companies that we were talking to in there and like Lauren, you know, having her spot to in a seven year period, she went from making hundreds of thousands of dollars up to almost fifteen million dollars in a seven year period. And yeah. that was the growth mind of her getting all the knowledge in there. So my wife is completely a little bit different than I am. She wants to read every book. She wants to know all this stuff and she has this. And I'm kind of like the backyard guy. I'm like the uh, guy that um, sees the whole sees a lot of the picture mm -hmm. and then puts it together. But I'm more the relationship type. I'm more the, yeah. the connector. I'm more of that kind of stuff. So I don't have that. Um, I have a different drive than her. Yes. Her drive is knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. My drive is like, who are the people here? How can I connect with them? And what is the best way we can serve each other? Because that's how I connect. That's how my receptors happen. And her receptors are a little bit different. She likes that too, but her is the reading, the, the podcast and things like that. So that's why I think it balances out so well. And that's why I think we've been successful in our business is because we balance each other out. It's like the yin and yang, you know, it's uh, totally different sometimes, but it's, it's on the same path. And you know, I have always said that that is a superpower that you have is the the ability to connect with so many humans. Yeah. You'll remember things, you'll call people, and it's not calling people just because you need something, it's calling people to genuinely say, hey, how are you doing, what's going on with you? And um, there's just, there is so many people that you know that I've never met in, and, um, and it's like, oh yeah, that's so-and-so, and I'm like, I've never heard his name ever and you're like oh yeah yeah that's that's um i met them doing this and this and it's i can only imagine how many people you interact with on a regular basis that you're just you just have that connection to i like the interaction part i like going to events i like going to functions i like meeting people and <clears throat> you know knowing some of the um I, I say the top business tier people here in town that in our industry, it's nice. And it's nice that you can call one of those people and if you have a question or if you need to connect somebody. And <clears throat> just like Bill and Kimberly, you know, I mean, they're good friends of ours and they own made event catering and stuff like that. And then they are they have a new product that's out right now and they were trying to get their uh, these energy gummy bears that they have out. And so we knew a few people that were able to call and they were able to make some sales. And uh, Mark from Chevron took them on and said, hey, let's bunch of 150 bags over here. And that's just a connection basis. And I tell you, um, what Athena does on her side is invaluable. I mean, she is the back office, the front office. She's the smart person on the whole entire front of that. And I'm more like the connector person that does all that stuff and connects that what she does and makes it work on the other side of it too. And um, if you, you don't want me in the office typing in a reservation or anything like that, I, I don't even have an office. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I gave my laptop to her because we ran over her laptop <laughs> We didn't ran over it. It was in the back of the truck because I told her we didn't need to have it in the front of the truck. So we left in the back and the back tailgate open and got ran over in, in Arizona. So was I was like, polish. my laptop's like new. It's only doing turned on like seven times because if I can't do it off this iPhone, we're in trouble, you know? So <laughs> it's too much <laughs> data entry if you can't do it on the iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> just like I have an iPad and I use that once in a while, but I am not that guy. I am not the, the computer guy. I'm not the person that's there. But if you need to know somebody or if we need to talk to the mayor, if we need to talk to a senator, if we need to talk to, 
somebody help get your passport i know a guy i yeah. know a guy that can make that happen and we can do it and then that's my superpower i guess as athena would say and her superpower yeah. is knowledge and <clears throat> i don't know which superpower is more important but the knowledge you know of knowing how to put all that together is good i just I, I always say that some people say that, you know, hey, Charlie tells us this is a stream and then Athena makes it happen. You know, I, I know that we can do it. I know the vision of what our company can do. And then I say, hey, honey, we got this contract now, put it together. And she's like, really? <laughs> like she says, she looks at it and she processes it and puts it together. And then all of a sudden, look, we got this new business, you know, so. You know, and sometimes I, I would say almost all the time that, um, uh, the way I'm thinking of, of something is usually a little bit different than the way he's thinking about, especially All like a contract. Yeah. And so there'll be times where I'll already see the potential of what's happening and he'll be like, well, I don't know if we want to do this. And I'm like, we're just listening right now because what I see is that this is going to make us more money. <laughs> and then I'll explain it to him. But just like if there's a situation going on in another realm and he's explaining to me his perspective, then I'll be like, Okay, you know. So we'll do it. We'll do it to the piece and see if it makes it happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, different ways that we have different ways of doing business and uh, do it. But the long run is to take care of the customer, to make sure that we're doing it right, and make sure it's right for our team and for our company. And we try not to go down avenues that really are not our thing. I mean, um, that's true. But like the whole idea around like how we started this conversation is that you have to start looking at yourself as the person that you need to take care of. It's not just the customer, it's not just your kids, it's not just the, the team. Like, like Charlie mentioned before, if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not looking at your health, if you're not looking at your peace, if you're not looking at how you're balancing with your finances, if you're not looking at how you're, you, how you're connecting in your relationships, then um, the rest of it is only gonna be at the slower frequency. Yeah, it's, it's more surface level. And, yeah. And I tell you, um, as most people know me for a long time, I've struggled with weight for a long, long time. I mean, it has been an up and down struggle for me. I mean, I lose and I drop and I get it. And I think your emotions and your other things and stress of your businesses are, but once you start to have that intentionality, I think it's really where the, the key is. I mean, like I try to keep myself under 1200 calories a day. And there's some days I might stray off that and I might get 15, 1600 calories, but my intentionality is to stay around that 1200 mark because I know I do well. I don't gain weight. I lose a little bit of weight. I'm not losing so fast that I'm scared about gaining it back or I'm hungry. Um, and if I if I need to go over it, I know it's okay. I, yeah. I know I can, but I know that I try to stick to that number. And when you start to stick to that number and you stay frequency to it, some people are like, there's just no way I can eat 1,200 calories a day. That's your mind telling you you can't. And one of the things I learned at Danny's is that we tell ourselves and our body tries to protect ourselves in saying that we can't do things because we want to protect ourselves. And it's our inner body that tells us that. It's not that we can't. I mean, people can live on bread and water if they really had to, not for a long time. You need some protein in there too, but you can do things that you don't think you can. It may not be comfortable. It may not be good uh, for what you think is going on in your head, but in the long run, you can do it. You can pretty much do anything you want to besides I don't think we could fly. I mean, you can. it's a one-way trip down the bottom, but it's uh, you can make it happen. And so there's so many different things in our lives that we've done that a lot of people think we couldn't. I mean, we're the largest small to medium size uh, transportation company in the state of Alaska. I mean, we're bigger than any other state by the other biggest state by two and a half times and nobody ever thought that would happen. I mean, but it's your intentionality of what you think you can do and what you can't. Now we know that we could probably be the largest if we ever wanted to, if we want to continue in doing that. But where's our new paths taking us? And, you know, as we start to open those blinders, and where we were just intentionality, just on transportation the whole entire time. Yeah. Now we own several homes and we're STRing now, short-term rentals and all these different opportunities because of good friends like Bill Faith. Like, you know, he's the one that opened that door when he had Limo University. He was teaching us about the limousine and transportation. And this guy is one of the brightest guys in the industry. And he's one of the top guys in STRs now. And we have developed this relationship. Like I call him once a month, but no matter what, or I text him what's going on because of that intentionality because I know he's a good person and we've vacationed you, with you him. You want to be, you're his friend though. That's I'm really his friend too, 100%, yes. 100%. And then JR and all these other people that we stay intentionally friends with and talk to all the time, um, we all try to help each other. And that's the, that's the fun part of all this, so. 
And it's, it's even more than try. I mean, it's absolutely do. We are doing. And um, I think that in this season, this is the happiest I've ever seen you in your body. Like just, you're just happier. And you, well, things and are more I, clear. See, I see you enjoying life, like in a whole nother level. Well, we're debt free. <laughs> I mean, when you don't owe money to people like IRS and places like this, you, 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 the burden lifts off you guys. Listen, you, you can live in this, this mindset of, of like, I owe, I owe, and I don't deserve, and I don't deserve. But once you realize that life is good and you can make it better, and you don't have to be in this mindset that I can't spend, I can't do things. You, you, of course, you have to pay your bills and do all this stuff. But once you have those things kind of lift off you as a burden, it, it's a lot easier to breathe. Like when the 300 pound elephant's not sitting yeah. on you, you can breathe them much easier. So I think <clears throat> as all the trials and struggles that we've gone through and our companies and our relationships and our friends and things that we've had, things are much easier now. I mean, like they're not a, I have to have, it's I want. And if I want it, I'll buy it. If I don't want to, then I won't. And I think we come to that place in our life now that we we can go on vacations. We spend more time out of town. I mean, we're, we're leaving for three or four months out of the year combiningly with kids, without kids. It's important to have relationship time and it's important to have relationship time with your kids too. But you're, when Athena was talking about how you have to be centered with your body, that was a little woo-woo for me. I was like, oh, well, shit, you know, does that make sense? I'm going to go get a cheeseburger. I'm hungry, you know, but the cheeseburger was giving me those empty calories and giving me the false things, the sugars, all the things that I was thinking about. Yeah, it was super easy. It was super convenient. It only took three to five minutes, but you can take that intentionality and run up the cars and go get a sushi roll, or you can go to the dish and get a sushi roll. You can get something that's going to be more healthy. It's got a little bit more um, protein nutrition. to it, nutrition, and I, I'm not worried about how that's going to make me feel because it doesn't make me feel as foggy and stuff. A, a big... I, I know Monster is going to probably uh, go down in stock. So if you own Monster in stock, but I quit drinking Monster almost two and a half weeks ago now, three weeks ago, I was four to six cans a day. I was drinking a Monster and that was one of the intentionalities. When we were down on this Awaken group that we were down this week, I first thing we did is we pulled over and got a couple Monsters and I drank the first one and it just didn't taste right. And I thought, wow, that's kind of weird. And so I got them a little colder because none of that stuff tastes good warm. Yeah. And of course, I brought my Stanley cup. You know, I, I got my good old Stanley cup with water and uh, a little bit of crystal light into it. I'm throwing a plug out for you. So if you guys want to pay me, let me know. But um, I started drinking that a little bit more. And then I got another four pack of it. And then we gave away three of them when we were yeah. gone. And I opened another can. I thought, you know what? I'm going to stop drinking this stuff. And Dana just smiled, you know, because she has been wanting me to stop for quite some time because i know that's just poison i'm putting into my body and so but i was i think i had a little addiction to caffeine at the time because i was drinking so much of them a day but after my water cleared out and i i started drinking 20 stanley cups a day 15 to 20 stanley cups a day don't get me wrong it's just not all water there's ice in there too but i was taking in so much water my skin started feeling better my feet weren't seem like they were drying up my arms my hands i i started and we were the driest contact ever noticeable difference in your skin immediately and we were in the driest climate you could be. I mean, we're in the Mojave Desert. I mean, we're like in fucking. Palm Springs excuse me. was pretty dry. I it, mean, was it was dry, like, it was a, like Arizona was... dry. Like, like yeah, it was hot and dry. But I was like, oh my god, I feel hydrated. And then Kona. I mean, I, I'm throwing all these Kona. plugs at Kono. Kono. Mm -hmm. K O N A. Kono. K O N O. Oh, Kono. K O. Okay. One of our sponsors at um, Awaken, they had these hydration packs and they were kind enough to give everybody away and everybody's raving about them. I'm like, well, I've never tried one. So I put it in there. I'm like, well, this is not bad. So we ended up buying a packet of them and we started draving those and I just felt more hydrated, more hydrated. And I thought, well, this is not bad. So when I go to all this and saying your health and your wellness, I thought I needed those monsters to stay up. I thought I needed those some things, but it really hasn't affected. In fact, I might get less sleep now that I'm drinking, the, not drinking those because I, I don't have that uh, sugar, uh, that, that like- Where a, it's uh, crashing it's you. crashing me now. Now I feel like I, I can go to bed and I go get some sleep. And when my body tells me it's time to get up, I get up, you know, it's not a big deal. And I'm not taking that monster, or what used to be Red Bull back in the day when we did the Red Bull vodkas, that was at the clubs. Uh, we don't have to have that anymore. So getting yourself centered with your energy, and I see so many of my friends that are drinking like six or eight or 10 of these a day because they feel like that's they have to keep it to keep that energy level. And I think that once you figure out you really don't need it anymore, it's, it's a good thing. Well, and I'm sure everybody can see this like freedom across your face. Like yeah. you really do look like you just feel like one more notch on the freedom scale. Wow. Being, being away from that like need to have all the all of those sports drinks like 
credit card looks better too. Shit, I'm not spending as much money at spending, you know, you figure you paid a four pack a day or six of those a day, it's 10, 12 bucks a day. I mean, the money didn't really matter. It's, it's, it's the stopping the intentionality of every day going by there and stopping and getting those things and being in line and buying it. And the people looking at you all the time saying, geez, are you, you going to drink this? all those today? You're buying, <laughs> you're buying that for your whole team? I'm not, that's just for me. Shit, I'm back twice the same day, you know? I'm like, I should. I had coolers in the back. I, I stuck them in my truck boxes. I mean, I had them all the time. I was getting cases of that stuff at the thing. So, not that energy bad drinks are a horrible thing. It's in moderation. Anything else you take, I just didn't moderate it. So, anyways, I just stopped. Don't get me wrong. Once in a while, I wake up in the morning. I'm like, God, I have one of those cold, ice cold uh, monsters that taste good. And if I chose to have one down the line, it would be okay. I, I know it would be. I just don't want to go back to that. I don't want to go back to taking those anymore. I want to get myself to a healthier place where I feel better and every day I feel better and I get more steps in. I don't get windy going up and down stairs. I'm walking more. I'm putting in way more steps. I'm carrying things up and down. I go load my car, wife's car up for solo I stuff know, like this. I know your energy level has been like skyrocketing over the last few months. In a lot of different places. <laughs> 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 so as, as my stamina gets more better, I, I, I feel like I can do more stuff. I, I, I don't mind going for long walks. I don't mind us going around stuff. I was running to get the car and going to get this stuff and picking them up and dropping them off. I mean, it's just like your energy levels way differently. And I think those things were more of a downer than they were an upper. I mean, it was almost what like is, alcohol. What, explain that a little bit because, it, I mean, the idea is, is that they're supposed to give you energy and boost you. Well, I think... I think once in a great while, if you had one and you were super tired, I think the caffeine and things were doing it. But I think as we do it so often, it's just mm -hmm. like anything else. Like as you drink, as you I used to be a former it. drinker, I don't drink anymore. But when you drink a beer or two beers, it gave you a buzz. And then you had to drink three. Then you had to drink four. Then you're up to a six pack. And then all of a sudden people are up to a half a case a day and, you know, or a 12 pack a day to get that same high. And, you know, if uh, people have ever been alcoholics or drug addicts, you'll talk to them and you'll never get that first high that you got the first time. So they're always constantly chasing that high. And I feel like the, I was always chasing that, like, I need that buzz level of caffeine in my life to get me to that next level so I could stay up. Because, you know, as all as business owners, like, especially 24-hour businesses, time sometimes is money. <laughs> time is money. And then, you know, you're that first man out the door, the last man out the door. Yeah. So you're holding the, 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 the final torch running down the road. And so I was always like, okay, I'm going to get a 12-pack. I could do another five hours, mm -hmm. you know, and I've already had a 12-hour day, you know. But um, once you figure out you don't need to that and you just hydrate yourself and you eat good, you get that energy from that food. And if you're eating the right kind of food, you that food will that give you the energy. It's like putting, excuse my French, shitty food fuel in your car it's not going to run so good you know if you if you put part water part gas part diesel in it it's going to chug it's going to cut along it might make you down to the end of the road but it's not going to be good but if you put premium fuel in your car you're going to get better octane you're going to go and it's going to be faster and you're going to be able to do things and i think that's our body is the most incredible machine there is i mean it repairs itself it cuts it seals itself i mean it we have colds, our white blood cells, our yeah. red, red blood cells. It does the work you do. So you know, I I feel like you learned, you already knew this. So like, what was the connecting the dots to where you just believed it in your center? Like, you know, I don't know if I knew it. I I, I don't know if I happened to hear it from somebody else. I, you know, if your spouse is your uh, is your best friend and your business partner and your wife, sometimes. Our radar dishes are not painting towards each other's way. <laughs> so, but sometimes somebody else saying it, you will hear it. And sometimes you have to hear it from somebody else differently. As, as, as you've had some huge breakthroughs on this last group too, hearing it differently and seeing something in a different light kind of opens up different ideas and saying, you know, I, I don't need to do that anymore. I mean, you see the group of people that we're involved with and a lot of them are super into their healthiness or health and fitness people. They're, they're actors. They're, we have actresses and actors and comedians and multi-millionaires industry yeah, yeah we have a, a gentleman a from hodgepodge. india and yeah. that was doing the same thing that danny was doing to five seven thousand people at a time and yeah. just incredible groups and when you talk to these people and you talk to them they're like hey i want you to be my visitor i want you to do this because we're all like-minded people and that's the fun thing it's like you know talking to some of our business leaders so going back to athena's question i think what made me come to this realization is like i don't need to anymore i don't have you that decide you just decide that you're going to stop and you do. Like, I haven't snuck back and had a sip of one. I haven't gone back and said, oh, I'm just going to have one today. Just decided it wasn't a thing anymore. And you can make that decision just like that. You just have to make that decision and you just kind of stick with it. So 
I am, that's where I'm at. So we even have monsters in the house and I give them to our guests. I was like, here you go. You can take these away with you. And they, they're like, well, thank you, Charlie. And, you know, we had a couple of people that came by and we gave them a couple. We had some on the boat for them and it was fine. And now I will gladly just walk around with my, uh, my little go-to juice that I put in there. And I, one now day I'll probably flavor. eventually stop these too and do something else, you know, but I'm good with water and ice, you know, I can just do it. And, you know, it's, it's okay. But, I still have to have my venti ice latte blonde with four pumps of caramel because that's <laughs> the only cafe I'm getting right now. And so that's the caffeine fix I'm getting. And thanks to uh, the little bears once in a while, I have some of those vitamin energy bears that are there. And those are all healthy and creatine and all that other stuff in there. So I guess our whole talk about this whole thing is like, once you get yourself right, you're better. We're better. We're 100%, 50% better. And your business will be better. Everything opens up. She's not closed off to me. I'm not closed off to her. We're more open about things. We're more talking about things. And if you can have that kind of relationship in your business, if you can have that relationship just between us, what is that going to do in our business? Our employees are much happier around us. Their yeah. children, our are kids happier. are a lot happier. You know, those teenage kids. You know, you got to reel them in once in a while too. You know, because they're on the kick of sometimes having energy drinks because they're not knowing where they're at right now in their life. So we're trying to teach them the same way too. It's like, hey, we don't have to have this stuff. We can eat healthier. We can do things. I'm cooking more now too. So helping with cooking and helping with some other things and just a more healthier lifestyle. I, I've cut out bread almost, I'd say 80% of it. I mean, I so once in a while I'll have a sandwich, but um, we'll eat lettuce wraps now. I mean, cut out a lot of the bad stuff. Even like when we went to Whole Foods, I was... I put two meatballs in. I put a couple of artichoke coats in. I remember just looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, I would pile this thing up and just eat whatever I wanted to until I was so full. But now I won't even need all that because I'm full. I, I, then why should I go past full? Then you just feel sick and you feel bad. Yeah. Like Athena one day, one day, she's like, she was put so much food in there. Too many. She ate one taco too many. She's like, she got these tacos. It was so good. She just kept eating them. Then she's like, oh, I feel so horrible. I feel so. Well, like, I was full, but I had two tacos. But at that time, I should have only had one taco. But so you have to listen to your body. Yeah. And that's one of the things that our body tells us. It's like when you're when your car's over full, it spits gas out. You know, yeah. and when you when you overfill something, water overflows. So. Why are we doing that to our body? I mean, because it tastes good? Well, okay, I don't need that extra 175 calories. I don't need that extra 200 calories right now because I'm full. I mean, I ate my sushi roll the other day and I had four pieces of my sushi roll. I was full at the end of it, but it was only 350 calories. So I only ate 175 of it, but I can make it wait. And then later I got a little hungry and ate a little bit more. Yeah. So you don't have to overdo it. You don't have to eat your whole plate. Like, I don't want to ever go back to our kids and say, you have to eat everything on your plate. Because I, I think that was a mistake. I don't think have ever had that philosophy. Well, we, we do with Charlie because if you put anything that's not what he won't eat, he won't eat I anything on his plate. I just give him a little bit, though. It's not yeah. like his plate is piled up. But I want him to, like, try well, some new things. But even look at little Charlie right now. I mean, our son Charlie, um, he is on a healthier kick now because he's hanging out with people that want to be healthy. Like, he's hanging out with the Windsor kids. Right, but don't you think that that has been inspired by you? Well, I because... think both of our kids. I think think both of our kids even Audra I mean Audra's eating more healthier and she's dead and we're all in this like area that we are cooking better we're eating better we're not stopping by once in a while we'll stop by canes or something like that and have us a treat but in our household it is and it, you can notice our kids and everything else and and I see little Charlie because he goes out and works out with Jonah now and he does all this other stuff so we have these great things that are happening uh, because of our intentionality well and I would argue to say that it isn't necessarily um anything other than how important your role is in the household as the leader of the home because i've always kind of like limited things that weren't good for me <laughs> and always... if he has a bag experience if he wants and it is like off the books so like it's on the black I don't list need <laughs> to eat a, a thing yeah. a couple more times to decide if it's going to make me sick three or four more times. So, so it's like... I'm the but, opposite. Like but, if I touch it and it's hot, maybe it was only hot that one time. Yeah, I got to touch yeah, it two or three yeah, more times he, to make sure it's hot. Yeah. So, but, um, so what I would, what I, I'm just observing is that it's more of this, this thing of as you've decided to step into this space, like your children are just gravitating towards the space also. And it's not, I don't think it's necessarily my influence because I kind of have had a consistency of like what's right for my body. And now that you're in this place, both of them are being so much more conscientious and they're making these decisions. And it's like, it's amazing to me to see how, how much 
when you step into this power of caring for yourself that you bring others on this incredible journey with you. Well, we've talked to lots of friends, but I, I don't think it's just myself. I think it's a team effort because they've already seen it in you. And then maybe as I, as a leader, as you say, the house are kind of the rebellious person a little bit. I'm going to do it the way I'm going to do it. So, and sometimes as they you, would follow you there. Though. Yeah, and they would, and because <laughs> that's what they come with me. Like, Dad, we need to get pasta. I'm like, yeah, sure, we need pasta. Let's go get it. You know, moms <laughs> eat a salad. And I was like, all right. But as we start to as we start to join forces together, and I say forces, as we start to be more in line with each other, the kids realize that they can't play as each other against each other. Like, okay, they're going to get in line, or they're going to be hungry, or they're going to have to make their own food. And I think that we really realize that it, as a team effort, we can make this thing happen a little bit better. And, and I'll tell you, we've had lots of friends. I can't even tell you how many people I, I have uh, turned on to uh, getting health better from other professionals that we can help them with it too. It's it's uh, when people start to see it. I had one friend say, fuck, if Charlie can lose weight, I can lose weight. You know, And I laugh. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? You know, Because I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why is that? Why am I? Why am I the pinnacle of like? If he could do it, anybody else can. I'm like, well, thank you. Is that a compliment or is that is that an insult? Yeah, this one guy's like, well, I'm doing it. If Charlie can do it, I can do it. I'm like, well, shit, okay, hell That's yeah. It's true, you can. Hundred percent. But I don't know. I think, is that a friendship thing you said or whatever else it is? But it is, and I'm happy to see them go through that journey because yeah. it's a journey. It is not an overnight sex. Like I said, we didn't put this on overnight. You know, I've been this since I was a little kid, as I've always been the little heavier set kid in there, all the way. And even in high school, I was chubbier. I wasn't. I wouldn't say fat, fat. I was probably two forty in high school, six foot one. Thick. You know, thick. And I was strong. I was strong as a horse. You know, but I realized I have a different role now. And you know, as we're going to our second stage of life, I say it, it's like, you know, how do we want to live out that last 30, 40, 50 years? How do we want to live that? Like you see people as, you know, we own an ambulance company too, and we transport these patients that, I think a lot of that had to do with that is um, uh, some of the uh, the patients that we transport are very large and huge, and it takes four or five of us to move them. And, and I don't see they're living their best life. Yeah. And I, I was like, wow, you know, I mean, we've gotten to this place where we're in a really financial great place. We own homes all over town. We're building two homes as we speak right now. We're, we're like, holy tamale. It takes a lot of energy to run all those projects. Like, and that's you part, that's the stuff I like. Running around. I, I, I like to go supervise them. I don't like to put them together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a great super. I take pictures very well. She just commented how good my photos are. But. <laughs> She again does all this knowledge about the, all this stuff and how to put things together. And then I put my input in, and sometimes she takes it. And then, like you know, we're we're doing digits and designs because I'm like insistent on some things. But it makes sense. I love putting those things together. I love be able to get the tree guy because I know the tree guy, and, and I, love I appreciate that. you showing up on those job sites because I don't want to drive to all those properties to see what's happening. And like, that's me. That's me keeping connected with her. And like yeah. you know, I mean, like even Dale and Mindy are contractors. I mean. Uh, we've I've known Dale for 30 years plus. I mean, Dale used to be one of my snow plowers. He used to be one of my lawn maintenance guys. I mean, he just grew and flowered yep. him and his wife and his kids and their whole families worked for us. We've kept him busy almost four years now. I mean, uh, and on the projects we're doing. So those relationships that you have with those people are just, uh, just huge, huge for us. Huge that we know that we can call them 24 hours a day, seven days a week and say, we got a pipe broke or whatever we can do and they're going to come and help us and fix it. And the same reason if they have a car broke down or something happens and Dale needs to get into our shop, he knows he can call me 24 hours a day and he has access to our whole entire shop. He can get in here and fix his vehicle. So if I can give you anything, I know it's been a while and I know what we're into this cast now, but relationships have to be you first. And then it has to be your partner or your kids. And it has to be your family. And then once you get all that kind of going, everything else just starts to make sense. Yeah. You get clarity around business. You get clarity around the decisions that you're making. And it's like you become, you step into this space of you trust yourself to do what's right for the next phase. And, and when you talk about doing this right, I mean, we we just kind of went through experience of having, uh, 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 we were going under contract for something and we decided to pull out of it and we didn't feel comfortable about it. And in the long run, we wanted to take care of the people that were putting things under contract. So we wrote a check for yeah. a service that we didn't even, I wouldn't say didn't get. We did get the service. We just didn't want to go through with the service. But the right thing was somebody was going to lose a commission. Somebody was going to lose part of the business. And we said, no, we want to do the right thing. Let's write a check. How much would that person make? How much did you guys put out in advertising? How much can you do it? Because this is, again, a friend of ours that was doing this for us. He gave us a great deal. But we pivoted because we saw another opportunity. Instead of renting it, we decided to sell it. 
And then when we decided to sell it, we we're going to reinvest that money to another property that we're going to do. And the right thing was to take care of it. And even they told me, no, you don't have to do this. You don't have to. It's not a big deal. No, to us, it was a big deal. Us knowing that we were good, that we were doing the right thing by taking care of it. I sleep better at night. I know that there's nothing to make it say differently than we just did the right thing. Right. And that's part of that decision making is when you feel like you're anchored and that you're you're not overtired, you're not running in survival mode. Like those are all pieces that you're talking about. Like we have years of running in survival mode oh. and just like getting through the day. And it's it doesn't have to be like that. And I think being locked to your money, I mean, like we give more, we treat more, we do more because we have more. And it's not that mindset that like, I can hold all this here together. Yes. This is just mine. This is just, this is me. I don't have me. enough or I do it. And, and I, I only have this fixed income. I can do it. Don't get me wrong. If you have bills and you only make X, you can only pay X. But once you get to a point that in your life, you're a little bit better. I, I didn't care about writing that check. It was, it wasn't a big deal whatsoever. But if you'd asked me 20 years ago to write that check and we didn't have that extra money, I'm like, they didn't really do the job that we're looking for anyway. So I don't feel bad at all about it. But that was the mindset I had because I wasn't in the right mindset of my time. And as you guys start building your businesses and things like that, and you look at it, when you take care of people, they want to take care of you. And I, I'm going to throw one more name out there is Tony Goodrich. I mean, she taught me that 110%. She owned Oxford Medals and everybody uh, Tony touched, she she was loved by everybody. I mean, she, she took totally, she took care of everybody. And even the people, I wouldn't say didn't deserve it, but sometimes took advantage of it. She still took care of them. And whenever Tony would call me 24 hours a day, I'd jump out of the car and go pick her up or take her wherever she wanted to go because she was always so good to everybody, always good to our family. I mean, always good to everybody and took us fishing and did all this stuff. It wasn't the monetary. It was her heart, her soul, yeah, you who she was. Yeah, you could see that that was just her generosity was who she was. And she was just loved by everybody. So it was just... I always look at that as, I would say, almost a mentor in that part to me, that she just, no matter what, she took care of people. And uh, it, it was uh, it was really cool. It was neat. It was neat to see that part. And I know that she was part of my journey. I know that she was part of my journey in life to get me where I'm at now. Yeah. So I know it's been a while, guys. How much time are we into this one? I didn't set the alarm. <laughs> I didn't set the alarm. I'm pretty sure we're good with this one. But anyways, hey guys, you know, we have a podcast and we love for people to ask us questions. We love for helping people too. I mean, this is part of us giving back what we know to you guys. So if you have any questions, reach out to us, put us out there. We'd love to help anything we can do. And uh, and you can reach out to us by posting a question or a comment on raiseupmindset.com. You can also find all of our our posted uh, podcast episodes there on our website, or you can go to anywhere that uh, you listen to podcasts, but absolutely check out our, our website. All right. See you guys. See you on the next one. Bye.